Um, first, I want to thank uh, personally Devra and Chuck and Eliu also for uh, creating this opportunity to speak. And uh, I'm a clinical psychologist in training, also trained in um, behavioral medicine and um, uh, psychophysiology and biofeedback. Um, and uh, a couple of years ago, I um, started consulting an organization that works mostly with uh, content in the internet, the problem of screening harmful content. And um, I asked them, is there anything, given my, my background, I asked them, is there anything, any background, any, any information about health risks? And they said, well, we don't know. And I found out that actually in Israel there's no uh, f organized database about the entire risks, not just radiation. So it ended up that I um, wrote an article about health risks uh, first, and I extended it, uh, I am extending it to psychological effects uh, of, um, regarding ages 0 to 18. Um, so um, I want to talk, this is, okay. So. Uh, we know today, I'll sp and I have a challenge here to not repeat too much uh, uh, what's been said in previous lectures to, uh, this morning, and I'll try to elaborate what we feel, the, the boots on the ground, so-called, what we feel and see, and what are the challenges. Uh, we know about vision problems, uh, bone density also, uh, issues, uh, orthopedic problems. Um, I'll speak about a little bit about sleep, ADHD, in relation to radiation and addiction, and neuropsychological uh, issues, social effects, cardiovascular disease risks uh, factors, and what's the clinical picture? What do we actually see with, with children? I work with children. I'm promoting, uh, unfortunately, I'm probably the only one. There's hardly anyone else who is trying to formalize a, uh, a treatment protocol with children with addictive behavior to screens. What do you do with them? There's probably tens of thousands of Israel, uh, Israeli kids who are, uh, um, they qualify to, uh, to, uh, to, to receive, um, they should receive some response to their situation. And there isn't any response. So, and there is a, an issue of uh, symptoms. Uh, an overlap of symptoms that uh, either are from radi orig originating from radiation or from mere screen time exposure. So that's also a question for further research. So what's the scope of the problem? Very briefly, a baby who is born at, uh, at our time now is expect expected to have a whole year until he's seven years old of screen time. That's one-seventh of his entire life until then. Um, We've seen uh, earlier that at ages 11 to 18, there are four hours of screen time, and Israel is leading, may not be the, at least at 2012, we were in the first place. Um, and uh, at ages 18 to, eight to 18, there are more than seven hours daily screen time. There's a, uh, a, a boy who came to my clinic, and from, he finishes school at three uh, in the afternoon until 12 midnight, He's on screens. He, has, he does not know to do anything else. He doesn't, know, he doesn't want to do anything else. Fifteen. Refuses to start a treatment. That's a very problematic age. In a way, there is a lot, uh, a lo uh, I can say, um, there is an age uh, group of um, 13 to 18, which are very hard to, to work now with. Because they are grown, uh, and they're grown-ups, uh, they're uh, mature enough, and they won't, they don't want to change their habits anymore. Okay, so until age, um, until we're, uh, people will be older, they might be close to 20 years in front of screens, the current generation. So, um, so media is accessible anytime, anywhere, and there are a couple of consequences for that. It's, of course, reduced physical activity. And the very, there's an interesting issue about bone density. Uh, it affects 
research shows that it affects both boys and girls. So there's an interesting point about uh, girls because there is a window of opportunity when they begin uh, uh, um, puberty. Uh, there's a window of opportunity about two years or so that they can uh, jump up their uh, or increase as much as possible bone density if they move around enough. And that's the exact age which screen time they, is increasing and they stop moving. And then the consequence is that osteoporosis might appear 20 years earlier at age 40 instead of 60 because they didn't um, utilize the window of, of opportunity when they were about 12 to 15 or so. And there is posture problems. We see kids sitting like that or standing like that all the time. And there is obesity. We also, so they have, they have weak bodies, either obese or very slim. Too slim and weak. And weak. So, and car of course, obesity is, and I'll mention it uh, later, is uh, related to cardiovascular diseases in adulthood. So the main question we have to ask ourselves, can screens overload children's uh, physiology? And what are the inf how, how, does screen, how do screens affect? We know a lot about radiation. What, what, are, what are the other factors? There's, there is this nice uh, product. How does it affect uh, children? Um, so there are bright uh, there is a br the bright light of screens. It affects, of course, as, as closer, uh, uh, closer to sleep time. It affects children more. The, c the colors of the, the screens are now very intense. They're not realistic. It's not like in reality. And then there is blue light, also affecting like uh, sunlight. It affects the... the um, 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 melatonin, melatonin hormone, melatonin, yes. And then there is radiation we know has a similar effect. So this is constantly around the children. And then there is very fa uh, increasing pace. The, the pace of the media is increasing. Of course, video games are the major factor that mostly the boys mostly use. And also learning side, I beg to differ a little bit. If the content is changing rapidly and fast enough, it will also affect the physiological system, creating sympathetic arousal. And um, it's not like reading books. Okay, and um, now about learning, about learning in schools. What I saw, in, in, and I came to lecture in school, I, I lecture to teachers, parents, pediatricians, neurologists, and I work also at a na national level with certain organizations trying to promote the awareness of this subject. And I've been to schools and I saw that actually um, principals and teachers, they uh, um, are melting when they describe how cell phone use is helping them now to teach because the, you, the youth is so used now to fast-paced stimulation so a teacher standing in front of them is a complete boredom for them so now when they use all this digital uh, media it's attracting the students grades might be going up and that the school shows that as a proof that, it, that it's working it's going to work for a while because we'll need maybe newer di uh, media to attract the children. Um, so there is pressure from teachers and principals to uh, bring in digital media, 
uh, in because it helps them so well you can argue does it help or not but it helps them to attract attention in class and then there is the WhatsApp and how many messages do you think uh, an adolescent receives every day hundred uh, ten hundred do you have any numbers so in Israel, actually, the average number is about 2,000, including from teachers. It was mentioned that actually the school comp per day, so it's every couple of minutes. It's uh, Wait, 2,000 messages a day. Yes, yes. Is Mostly. Is a mean? Well, it's. It's. It's clear. It's when I I I collect information for for. I collect this information from parents who I lecture to, from uh, youth who come to my clinic. I ask them that. So these are the numbers. Some say even more. So that every, every couple of minutes, there is this beep of a message. So your mind, your brain cannot rest. Okay? So the, this, uh, since I come from stress, ma stress management, I, I'm very aware to that problem. Okay. So... And then there are a couple of screens simultaneously. So the entire effects will probably, let's say, multiply. Okay. So this is influencing, this is stress 24-7, 365 days a week for children. This is what they're, this is the sensory stimulation they receive. Okay. So let's talk about uh, the connection of sleep, addiction, and any ADHD. It was mentioned before, so I will skip a little bit, a few things. Uh, so what do we know that the, the, the youth is doing in their room when they're trying to sleep? Because they close the door, and it probably may look like this, and they are uh, going back to their phone, which will uh, inhibit sleep again. Um, so we spoke about... Um, the bright light, ultraviolet, and RF radiation, which is affecting melatonin. And then there's daily screen time, which uh, one hour of screen time may decrease 10 minutes of sleep time. And there, is, and there are two factors, the sleep time and sleep quality. And both can be affected. And this, there is a sympathetic arousal um, creating um, a sleep disorder. And then there is... Um, the use of screens specifically before uh, bedtime. And I tell uh, parents the first most important step you can do is eliminating screen time before bedtime for at least an hour or two. And uh, that's very important. So, and screens are in a children's room. Of course, we have to, the second step is to try to take all screens uh, out of the room because we don't know how, how they will use them before sleep time. Of course, we have more control over content also because we're moving the screens from the room. So something about sleep, uh, 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 sleep disorder effects, it's, it it's prevails throughout all ages. And there are many symptoms, some similar, some different between the ages. The sleep is compromised. Um, there is tiredness throughout the day. Uh, sympathetic arousal for um, um, younger kids at 14 and to 10 to 14. And I mentioned the one daily screen time hour, which affects the, the, the sleep. And then when the younger kids, there are muscle, uh, muscle cramps and there's sleep talking. And with the babies, there is anxiety delaying the timing of sleep uh, onset because parents use uh, uh, you know, tablets or whatever to try to so-called calm them down. And it, the result is quite the opposite. And there also, there is day tiredness. So what are the results? The results of sleep disorder is a significant melatonin decrease and the risk of a compromised immune system and a greater risk for cancer. The other consequence is ADHD-like li symptoms. And notice that I say ADHD-like symptoms because they act like children who have ADHD, maybe not the full diagnosis, but uh, the uh, educational system will refer them as ADHD symptoms, uh, ADHD children to treatment.
So uh, a main issue that was also mentioned is the addiction to fast-paced, interactive <coughs> screen stimuli. And what's the relation to, uh, of that to sleep and ADHD? So first of all, um, we know today that there is an increase in dopamine secretion. Um, um, because of the fast-paced stimulation. As the faster the stimulation is, there's more dopamine secretion. But the more uh, the screen time, uh, there, is, uh, less, uh, there is a decrease in dopamine uh, receptor, the number of the receptors. So the system, you can say, is my overused. And that might lead for uh, a search for more stimulation because this, there's, there are less receptors. So that, that may lead to an addiction cycle, which is, to, in many respects, similar to substance abuse addiction. And chronic sleep by itself, just by itself, can cause ADHD symptoms. Again, we have children who behave like they have ADHD. And then there is the fast-paced <coughs> stimulation that... Um, the children's brains are, they get, it, gets, it, it gets used to fast-paced stimulation, so the attention span is shortening. So a child with a short attention span is actually a child with ADHD, or he's acting like with ADHD, he cannot bear lo uh, extended time of concentration. So we have ADHD-like symptoms, and the, this cycle begin, can begin with children who do not have a ADHD but are exposed to fast pass stimulation, but there are children who come with ADHD, and ADHD uh, uh, is known, that it's a situation known that they have already decreased uh, dopamine, so this cycle will be, uh, may start from here, and the ADHD children will also look for fast paced uh, stimulation <coughs> because it will increase their dopamine secretion. And ADHD children are, um, they're seated in front of screens and they're quiet. And, everybody, and people may think, well, that's great. Look, what the screens are quietening them down. But actually, we might be increasing, worsening their situation. Why? Be because we increase this cycle of dopamine, uh, the receptors might be now, we increase the same situation. They're, they have lower dopamine, right? So... We might wear down the, the system, in, in so-called. Okay, a word about cardiovascular diseases. So we're speaking about obesity, hypertension, insulin, and stress. So there is now evidence of high blood pressure with children at all ages. There was a large study, 16,000 children in eight European countries that found that um, more than two hours a day only of screen time, um, uh, we can expect a double the expected rate of high blood pressure. It can reach the 19th, 19, 90, 90 percentile for their group age. At age six to seven, we find narrow ar uh, arteries in the eyes, which is an indicator for um, cardiovascular disease in the future. And at age 12, we have research that each hour of television computer viewing is a show that associated with blood pressure rise. Um, and that's the 90 percentile I mentioned at ages 14 to 17. Reading, in contrast, decreases blood pressure. Reading from books. Okay. Okay. So cholesterol, three hours of screen time, and notice that I'm mentioning two hours, three hours, that's the average. Above that, we see the symptoms appearing, the effects appearing. Uh, significant lower of the good cholesterol. And however, the research doesn't find uh, when children are sitting down, uh, they find that the, there's lower good cholesterol decreasing, decrease, but there isn't any, um, when they do other activities sitting down, there isn't that effect, like drawing or whatever. 
Insulin diabetes, there is a correlation, again, with two hours per day of screen time. It's related to uh, lower uh, insulin levels than the norm and compromised metabolism, which is associated with diabetes type 2. And dysregulated cortisol is also associated with, um, uh, yes? Okay. Okay. So, associated, uh, uh, dysregulated cortisol associated with uh, screen time, there was a research which they placed babies who were playing with blocks versus babies who were watching some video, and the babies who were watching video, uh, okay, will appear in a minute, uh, had lower cortisol as a response. Another uh, study, uh, they, they studied uh, adolescents who were exposed three hours to any communication, digital uh, uh, means, and they also had insufficient uh, cortisol rise in the next morning. So the effect was over 15 hours or so to the next morning. And that creates chronic stress because if they keep using the computers in the same way every day, so until the next morning, they have dysregulated cortisol, which is associated to the, to the coping with stress. So, yeah, okay. Um, so nurse, neuropsychological effects, what do we know about that? And studies now, there's huge studies in South Korea and China because the addiction there is really going crazy. And we know now, it's, the studies relate to internet and, and game addiction and multitasking also in general. In general, it also, it's, these are studies also about 20, uh, ages 20 and above, uh, young adults. And the study relates, the reference point is six hours of use as the uh, defining addiction. It's not the official uh, uh, addiction, uh, yeah, internet addiction um, as it's in the DSM. So they find affected frontal lobe functioning, they find decreased cognitive control and shrinkage in or loss of tissue, in volume in gray matter. And they found the following of areas who sh are shrinking in their volume, which are associated to the following uh, capabilities or traits. Empathy, error conflict detection, aggression and impulsivity, and decision making. Now I want to ask you, what do you think are the, what is necessary for a child to become a cyber bully if it's not these things? And indeed, there is a correlation of internet use and cyberbullying. Okay, so what do we see actually in, in, cl in the clinic? Um, or with tens of thousands of children who do not come yet to the clinic? So we see in the physical, we, we actually said some of these things. We see obes obesity or physical weakness. We see also head uh, headaches, stomach aches, unexplained physical uh, uh, pains, vision and orthopedic, compromised immune system, and mainly sleep, sleep disorder, hypertension, and uh, cortisol dysregulation. We see also in neurologically, neurological effects, we see tics, stuttering, increased uh, Tourette symptoms, and autistic spectrum behavior. Now, there are two things uh, we should notice that um, I, have, I had a 15-year-old come to me, had um, anxiety over a test, t uh, test anxiety, and tics. Only those two things. So what, what's the origin of that? How should we treat him? Should we treat, go send him to a psychologist to treat his anxiety? Should we send him to a neurologist to treat his tics? Um, so I did mainly uh, educa uh, psychoeducational uh, program to decrease his screen time besides some relaxation uh, exercises, and both symptoms improved. Uh, about auti autistic children, if they're already autistic, their symptoms might increase, and other children who are not autistic may appear on the, autistic, on the autistic spectrum, might be diagnosed like that. Uh, it was mentioned also that learning-wise, there is a late language development for babies, 
and memory and concentration problem, and decreased uh, school achievement. Uh, we also know about the digital dementia phenomena. There's an OECD study that showed that if you use too much uh, computers, there are the learning achievement go goes down. And there are the three areas which we find the neuroanatomical changes I mentioned earlier. And in the cognitive behavioral, we see ADHD, cognitive control, and aggressive and defensiveness, defensiveness, defensive behavior. We also, we mentioned conflict and error detection. We see decision, problem decision making, defensiveness, and also, uh, defensiveness twice. And we see also OCD uh, like behavior. In social, we have the low empathy, which we see that they cannot relate well to children. They have few or no friends, and they don't enjoy activities. And emotionally, there is depression, suicidal behavior, and I want to say something about the, suicide, uh, the depression. So depression, we know that maybe radiation may affect uh, the body and create depression-like symptoms. Depression may come from mere screen time, and depression may come from children who experience shaming. So there's three factors that the digital world is uh, causing uh, depression and increased suicidal behavior. There, the the, the um, department uh, at the uh, psychiatric hospital for adolescents is uh, now one of the biggest in Israel, is full. Uh, there's full uh, it's just full with children. There's no room for more. Um, um, who are experienced shaming and they come after a suicidal uh, attempt. And there are, uh, we see in children uh, tantrums, uh, irritable mood, anxiety, withdrawn, withdrawnness and separation, anxiety, nightmares, and there are many more other symptoms. So this is what we see with children who have excessive screen time. And there is, coming back a little bit to radiation, so we know that radiation may cause headaches, it may cause even the uh, literature speaks about cortisol uh, di uh, dysregulation and blood pressure. It may cause uh, concentration problems. It may cause ADHD symptoms and depression. So how would we know, research-wise, what is causing what? That's a very important question. And children may uh, display a very different combination with each, ch uh, each time we display a different combination. It makes the picture very difficult. So there is misdiagnosis and with children, parents are confused and they're not aware for the cause of the, the, the children's symptoms. They don't know uh, the cause. So children may be left untreated. So this is uh, a, a case study, a short case study. This is a child who came to me, nine year old, and you see in his home, he was exposed to uh, screens in his room, a large screen, phone use, and he was glued to the screen. Um, and you see this giant screen that he used, it's like this size almost, in his home, playing uh, uh, ga video games. And then he improved because we, uh, he went to a, like a fast, a screen fast. And his symptoms improved. He was aggressive in school. He was not learning. Was, he, had, he had ADHD symptoms. And all these decreased, uh, improved. If you will try to locate as within the uh, range of uh, so, uh, uh, the treatment progress. So his sleep time uh, uh, was earlier. He woke alert and better behaved at home. And uh, from week six, he was um, less aggressive behaving well in school, there were better, a better feedback in school. He enjoyed more activities we began starting week six and uh, improved uh, frustration tolerance and regaining more lost weight because he lost it because of the Ritalin that he received. Now, the, he, had a, he had a signal booster in his room. I re, I, I, and I, you have to question uh, parents very carefully because I re didn't realize it. That I was developing my questionnaire. And then they took it away. So around that, so what, may, what is 
it does, is this improvement because is this improvement because the signal booster was removed because we see also improvement before that around that time you really stopped playing this PlayStation fast paced stimulation so what was what is affecting what that's a complicated question so we see now in children this list of uh, diseases that I mentioned earlier, also cancer and fertility problems, and emotional and cognitive dysregulation and stress management. But their psychophysiological resilience also is, uh, stands on three legs, and the second one is relationship, interpersonal relationship with their parents. And it, we, we heard that there's decreased, time, decreased quality or any time with parents, and that will affect their future relationship. But, not but, adding to that, they, now children's time is screen time. They don't know any, that's their reality. And they have no time with themselves. And they don't, will not, they're not monitoring their feelings and thoughts like maybe we are used to. And, at the, at the, uh, and, and negative thoughts especially. So at a certain moment when there's some trouble or crisis time, negative thoughts might rise to a, to a threshold that they're not used to bear. And this will lead uh, to a decreased ability to handle stress. We also, we see now in workplaces that already, speaking of what Ruven spoke earlier, that what organizations want, for, want from employers uh, who are now more digital, uh, they, are edu they, they are more capable with, uh, uh, with uh, the digital media, but they have less interpersonal relationship, which are now the most important thing in organization. In organizations. We might expect an overload because of this in the mental health system, and thank you for listening. And I want just a final quick word, which those chains remind me, that I think... Um, all forces should be joined, radiation people, psychology, even content people, should, every, all forces should be joined because these are the forces who increase the phenomena. There's content on the internet which is addictive, and there is radiation, and there's psychophysiological effects. Everyone who's dealing with it should join to uh, make us work better.